What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be telling you the best pickleball paddles that you can purchase for $100 or less. There are hundreds of pickleball paddles on the market right now, so I've narrowed this list down to what I think are the best five. Okay, at number five, we have the Adidas Drive. Now, if you guys have been around on my channel for a bit, you know that Adidas has always been a little bit of a meme. They recently relaunched their paddles with several new lines, and when I took out the Adidas Drive, I was honestly shocked by the results. The spin was very good. Even though it's just some applied texture to the face, it's fast in the hand and has reasonable pop. Can you expect anything crazy performance-wise from this paddle? No, I wouldn't really say so, but at $70, you're probably someone who's just getting into pickleball. If you've already moved on past $100, there's really no reason to look at this, but if you're just getting started, this would be a great beginner paddle that does offer good performance. I also think if you added some lead tape on the sides of the paddle or at the throat, it would make the paddle feel a little bit more stable and give you just a little bit more power. Adidas also has the Match 2 Lite, which is the same paddle, it's just a lighter stock weight than the Drive 2. The Match 2 comes in 7.5 to 7.8 ounces, while the Drive 2 is 7.8 to 8.2 ounces. So if you prefer a lighter paddle, you could get the Match 2. In the number four slot, we have the 6.0 Sapphire. 6.0 has been most known for their black diamond and double black diamond paddles, which has led the Sapphire to be overlooked. Now, if you're familiar with the words Torre Carbon Fiber, you're used to that meaning it's a raw carbon fiber paddle. The Sapphire is not a raw carbon fiber paddle, despite having Torre in the description. It has an applied grit to the face that, in my opinion, is not as good as raw carbon fiber, but you do still get pretty solid spin. One of the biggest appeals for the Sapphire is going to be its very low swing weight for an elongated paddle. It comes in at 108, which is incredibly low for a paddle of this length. Most of the time, an elongated paddle is around 118 to 124, which is much harder to swing. So if hand speed is important to you, this would be a great paddle. The trade-off with that low swing weight is that the paddle doesn't hit that hard. I would say it's either an all-court paddle, if not leaning slightly more towards control, despite being 13 millimeter. So just keep in mind that it's not really a power paddle. The main issue I have with this paddle is that it does have exposed polymer in the handle, which I personally hate, but it may not bother you. This is just where you can feel the core through the handle because it's not covered by anything. So this can make it feel more cheap than other paddles where it's covered up. In number three, we have the SLK EVO 2.0 line. Now, similar to the Sapphire, the Evos do have exposed polymer in the handle, which is a little bit annoying to see because Selkirk's a larger company and I think they just know that this is a cop-out at this point to have exposed polymer. I'm not gonna go down the whole rabbit hole. You guys know if you've watched my channel that I hate it. They didn't fix it here and it's disappointing to see. If that's not a deal breaker for you, these paddles do perform reasonably well. They have three models, a control, hybrid, and power. My recommendation would be to buy the power model as that's the one I enjoyed the most. One of the reasons I'm including the SLK EVO line is because they have three models, but they also have two different shapes, the XL and the Max. The XL is for players who use a two-handed backhand, and the Max is a better shape for beginners because of the more forgiving sweet spot. If you're new to the sport and looking to buy a good-looking paddle with reasonable performance, the SLK EVOs fit that bill well. If you are a newer player to the sport, I would highly recommend you choose the Max shape over the XL unless you know that you really want the longer handle. In number two, we have the Ronbis R1.16. While not technically listed as $100, you can use discount code PBSTUDIO and that takes $20 off, which brings it to that $100 price point. The Rhombus R1.16 is a fantastic control raw carbon fiber pickleball paddle. Ronbus also has the R2.16 and the R3.16, which are different shapes of the same paddle. If you need a long handle for a two-handed backhand, you can get the R3.16. If you don't like long handles and have a table tennis background, you can check out the R2.16, which has a very rounded head. One of the R1.16's most standout features is the incredible spin. 
For a period of time, it was the highest paddle I had ever tested at 2120 RPM, which is an absolutely ridiculous result, especially when you factor in that this paddle is only $100. The R1.16 is more of a control paddle, so it's great for dinking, blocks, and resets. So if you want a paddle with tons of spin and has awesome control, then I highly recommend the R1.16. Now, before we move on, I do want to give a few honorable mentions. In the last eight months, new brands have been consistently lowering the prices of raw carbon fiber paddles. You can find them from other companies such as Spartus, Bison, Baller, Hudef, as well as x on Amazon. Some of them come in different shapes and thicknesses, which may be appealing if Ronbis doesn't have an option for a shape, thickness, or handle length that you prefer. In my opinion, the R1.16 is the best, but just know that many of the raw carbon fiber paddles in this price range all perform relatively similarly. So if they have a shape or thickness you want, you may want to consider the other options. Finally, in number one, we have what might be the best value performance paddle in all of pickleball right now the Vatic Pro Prism. After discount code PB Studio, it can be purchased for $90, which is an absolutely absurd steal for this paddle. I seriously can't praise this paddle enough for the price. It's absolutely ridiculous how cheap this thing is. The Vatic Pro Prism is built similarly to the Yola Hyperion with foam injected walls. The Flash is my preferred shape because the V7 has a very high swing weight, which is around the same as the original Hyperion. So if head heavy paddles are an issue for you, choose the Flash as it's much more maneuverable. Despite the V7 having a high swing weight and the foam injected edge walls, I would still heavily classify these as control paddles. For most people, I recommend that they choose the Prism Flash due to its much lower swing weight, which shouldn't cause as much elbow strain or slow your hands down. The V7 is fun for me, but I much prefer the Flash. I would put it in a very similar category as the Ronbus R1.16, but I do think that the injected foam walls are helping make the sweet spot just a tiny bit better. The Prism has now become my default recommendation for those looking for a quality paddle in the $100 price range. It easily competes with paddles that are more than twice its price, which is very impressive. So there you guys go. Those are my top five recommendations for paddles that are $100 or less. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to go check out this review of my current favorite paddle that I've been using.